All right, well, let's do some uh, programming, and let's start off with that program that we wrote last time, the Hello World. Now, I could have just loaded the program in, or I could have cut and pasted the code, but I strongly um, recommend that you um, spend the time to actually type out programs. Um, it makes uh, learning programming um, much easier by making you kind of an active uh, uh, entry. If you're just cutting and pasting the code or looking at the code, um, it's just slightly less effective. Okay, so starting off with pound include IO stream and using namespace standard int main and return zero and a closing brace. What do all those things mean? We will be talking about them. Today I want to focus on the other portion of what we did. Um, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and save my file. Um, and here we will we'll select save and we'll call this, oh let's call this uh, lab one cpp and save and notice after I save it uh, it activated color syntax highlighting that's because this text editor now knows that it's a C++ file because of the extension here it didn't previously okay and what we did last time looked like this see out hello uh, world end line and semicolon. Okay, and before we go any farther, we should um, uh, make sure that this program uh, works and you know compiles and runs, and uh, then we can do some experimenting with it. So here, make sure, need to make sure that my uh, command line, my terminal window, or the, you, your SIGWIN window at home, is uh, working in the same location as where you saved the file. And now we'll compile the program. Lab01.cpp. And notice I didn't get any warnings or errors, so that means the param um, compiled successfully. And now I can run it with dot slash a dot out. And there I get my output. Okay, so what's going on is um, at the simplest level, a computer program, written in any language, but including C++, is a series of commands, you know, one after another. These commands are also known as statements. So, and a command um, is uh, typically a term with a semicolon. Many of the commands, although not all of the C++ commands uh, will learn are terminated with a semicolon, but most of them are. And by um, default, the commands are executed in sequence. So first it completes your the first command, the second command, the third command. It's like, it's like a list. And so, so far we learned one command or, or one type of statement, and that's C out. If you think about what a computer does, or what a program, or a C++ program does, it really falls into one of three categories. It can be a statement or command that deals with input, that is gathering information that comes into the program. It can be a statement relating to output, or a program communicates information back to you, or it can be some kind of processing, such as uh, comparing values to see which is greater, testing a value to see if it's equal to zero, uh, doing arithmetic, uh, and so on. And every computer program is made up of these three pieces. And very soon uh, we'll be able we'll talk about input and processing and add that ability into our programs. For our first programs, um, we're only dealing with programs that do output, and that'll keep them a little bit simpler. Now, the output command that we've um, used so far is C out. So let's go and take a look at um, our program here. Now, what would happen if we added another C out statement? 
why don't we add another one that's just like the one that we have. Okay, and I'll go ahead and save the program. Now, because the program has changed, uh, I'm going to need to recompile it. Notice if I run the program, I just get the, um, the last version I compiled. So, remember I'm using the uh, arrow keys to scroll through the previous command history, and we'll compile the program again and run it, and notice now we get um, uh, two outputs. Now, to verify that they're coming in the order that I told you that they are, we can make a change to the program and recompile and run this. Now we can put in as many uh, output statements um, as we want. So they're doing a little bit of cutting and pasting. And we can recompile and run the program. And now we get several lines of output. So we can uh, put in as, as uh, uh, many commands um, as we want, and it's going to execute them one after another. Um, if you forget the semicolon, and we try and compile the program, we'll get an error message. And depending on exactly what compiler um, you're using, um, you, the error message um, will hopefully be quite clear. And here it is. Um, that's pretty good. That's about as good as the error messages get. Expected semicolon after expression. Um, later on, we'll also define this as an expression and talk about that. what that means. Right now, we're just calling it a command or a statement. And so, um, it's telling us that I um, expected to see a semicolon there, and it didn't. So we can go ahead and add that back in there. All right, well, let's take these lines that we added out of our program. Oops, and let's get that semicolon there too. And uh, one habit that I definitely encourage you to develop is to compile often. So every time you make a change in your program of a, a few lines, go ahead and compile and test and make sure that it's still working. Um, if you develop this habit from the beginning, um, you'll have a much more pleasant uh, programming experience. Um, it's always not a good idea to write large sections of a program, or even the whole program, and then compile and test it for the first time. And the reason for that is if there's a problem, the problem could be, you know, uh, spread amongst a large number of places. But if you always write a few new lines uh, at most before you compile, then if there's a problem, you're much more likely to know exactly where the problem is. Because sometimes the compiler um, will only be able to tell you that there is a problem and won't be able to tell you exactly where the problem is. Okay, so our program is back to um, its original state. Well, what happens if we take out this portion of the command? All right, and we'll go ahead and compile the program and run the program. And um, notice now that we have a um, uh, program where the output ran together with the next prompt. And this um, looks uh, um, bad, but it it's also is bad. And that's because a line of text, whether it's in the program or as part of your output, should always be followed by a, a new line character to take, to take you to the next line. Last time we saw that that was a problem if we um, had a program line that um, didn't have a new line after it, and here we see it's also a problem if one of your output lines doesn't have that. Now, the cout command itself, the way it works is that um, you have the word cout, and then you use this symbol here, which is known as an operator. This is known as the uh, stream insertion operator, and what it does is it takes this entity that you've put here and sends it to cout which stands for character output, or sends it to output. And so far we've seen that that means that we shows up on the screen here. Now, we can take the end line, which means that the line should end and you should go to the new line, the next line, and put that as a separate command. And that will also work. And we will recompile the program and run it, and that worked fine. 
So, so far there's two things that we know how to output, and one is the word and line, and the other is what we would call a string literal. And a string literal is a sequence of uh, characters and surrounded on both sides by the um, uh, quote character from your keyboard. And that will tell the computer to literally print what it is you've put there. And so if you wanted to print something else, such as my name here, or your actual name, I think you'll want to do that on um, an upcoming uh, assignment, then we can get the computer to print out literally the um, characters that we've typed. Okay, well that wraps it up for our, our first look at uh, output commands, and uh, in our next uh, lecture we'll um, talk about uh, full programs, and we'll include some input and processing. Thank you.